Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Got a pile of buckets up here, and if you remember from yesterday, we have got our two mobile wash plants all lined up next to each other, and hopefully today we're going to be able to start scooping a little bit of dirt into them with our new excavator that's parked up all the way over there. So the first thing that we're going to need to do today is start joining these pumps together, and we've got some more buckets over here. We've got, actually I just want one of these buckets to make this a little bit easier I think I will keep two empty buckets and then we can fill these buckets here I'm hoping from the mobile wash plant so I know that the big excavator is tier 3 and I think really we could say the magnetite separator and the wavetable is tier 2 rather than tier 3 so if we say that that is tier 2 that means that really because we are using the big excavator to do this I'm gonna say that this is tier 2.5 this isn't quite tier 3 because we don't have a huge wash plant and all the rest of it set up over there. So we're going to call this 2.5. Now, one thing that I'm not sure about yet is we took out a big loan and the new loan that we've got, well, with the loan that we've got, we didn't take out the maximum amount of loan that was available. We took out half of it. But when you go to the bank, it says uh, loan taken and there wasn't any way to like repay some of it. Now, we couldn't repay all of it. And we took it over 60 days. So what I'm concerned about is, are we going to be able to take out any more loan before we've repaid the other? And are we able to pay it back early at all or not? Because if we can't pay it back early, what that means is we're going to be stuck with a loan for the next however many days. And we're not going to be able to get any new loan. Um, let me just turn this pump around a minute. Yeah, we're not going to be able to get any new loan which means that we're going to be um, stuck with just that loan for 60 days. Well, 59 days now. And then we're going to have to, so we're going to have, if we want anything extra, we're going to have to like uh, just earn our own money. And so we're not going to be able to get any assistance with moving on to all the rest of the tier three stuff. We're going to have to do this until we've earned enough cash for it. I'm kind of hoping this isn't the case because if it is, it's going to be a little bit difficult to say the least. I really, really hope that it's not the case, but um, I guess we'll just sort of wait and see on that one. So let me just put that one in there. And right, I'm going to put the buckets in here first. We'll run this one around this side and drop that one in there. Next, we need the cables. So if I put this generator, I'm not sure where I'm going to put the excavator. Now, if we put the excavator here... So it's digging on this side, it's scooping up there and it's putting in. That means we want to put the generator over. Oops, I didn't want to do that. It's a problem, you can take the cap off, you can open the cap, but then it doesn't let you sort of put it back again. And we'll put this generator here, so that's sort of facing in the right direction. Grab that part, um, the cable, and if I go over this way and do it like that, and I'll put one on there. Nope. Use that one on that side and then bring it round. Plug it in like that. Excellent. And I will also get this hose pipe. And the one on that side can go straight into here. And then we get another one over the other side. And that one can run into the other side of the wash plant. There we go. There we go. Bring that one round here. Now, this is the only issue, is that you get earth that turns up here. So, is this pipe going to be in the way of all of that dirt? I'm not quite sure. We'll, we'll find out once we get started. So, that's that one all set up. And this one is nearly set up. I just need to get the, big, the other big cable to go there, just to fill that one in. And I think I left that one down here. I'm pretty sure I did. I left it folded up over here somewhere, didn't I? Oh, no, I didn't. I know where that one is. That one is back in our tent. I had It was the spare one that I had, and I've coiled it up, and I put it back in the tent so that it wouldn't get lost or anything. So let's go and get that one a moment in here, and there it is. Sitting on the shelf, just waiting for us. So we take that one, and we'll run and plug that one in. And then we're going to take some fuel and fill up all of the pumps and that. We'll start with the two that are completely empty and we'll fill those first. I don't think we've got all that much fuel with us. So I am actually thinking that I could go and get the mobile fuel trailer and run that one from the shop. Go and fill that one up and sort of make use of some of this um, 
No, let me coil that back over this way. Make use of some of this extra money that we've got. So, um, get the magnetite trailer, get the, um, the mobile fuel thing. Um, I think that's about it, actually, because there isn't a big version of the pump yet. We've, you've got to have these small pumps. And I'm assuming that they will bring a big pump in at some point. They just haven't yet. So we'll start off by filling that one and that one and then the generator. And then we can go back and we can fill the other two. If we need to get more fuel, we will get the, um, the mobile fuel trailer. We've got two jerry cans here, so we can use those. We can fill them from the trailer and then run around to the different pumps and fill them up like that. So it should be relatively straightforward to do that. Um, but looking at that, that one's about a third full. Oop. Oh, I nearly dropped it. Yeah, going by the red line on the side, that one's about a third full. So I'm hoping that we will have enough fuel here to do these three. So long as we, well, so long as we can put fuel into this pump and the next one, we're all we're good to go, really. Why is it? Oh, it's percentage filling up. In your own time, just you just look at the little thing on the side. We're going to use up all of the fuel in that can. Um dropping it into this one here so while this one fills i'm going to go and get the other one and then we can use that one just to top up all of the rest of them there see it's empty the fuel tank is empty so we go and get the other one we've got enough to at least just get started for today and then we can see about getting a mobile uh, a fuel trailer and also the magnetite trailer we'll get both of those a bit later on so i mean when we do go and get it we'll take both of these jerry cans with us and we'll fill them up at the garage as well so that we've got both of them, and then we can come back through. Ooh, not actually meant to go this way, and I want to fill these up from this side. I'll also start them as I go through, so that we don't have to come running all the way back over here yet again. So let's put that one in there, and while that's filling up, let's start it. Probably not the best way to do it, but, you know, it works, so we'll, we'll go with it. And I don't actually have very much left in here. I don't think I'm going to be able to refuel all of them. I think I'm only going to be able to refuel some of them. Start that one up. 90, 100%, and fuel tank is empty. That, literally, that used every last drop of fuel that we had. So I'm going to leak. Actually, no, I'm going to take this one with me, and I'm going to put it next to the other pump so that i got both of them together, and then we don't forget them. Uh, although, I will just start this pump before I go. Come back up here, and start you. And we come down here, and we can start this one. This one at least is at 100%, so it's nice and easy. Take that one there. Excellent. Come back up. And so we got our fuel cans kicking around here. That one's only at 37%. So this is probably the one that's going to run out first. Let's just go over here. Oh, that one's not very good either. Turn that one on there. Right. We've got two mobile wash plants with buckets all ready to go. And they're both working. They've both got water. They've both got the buckets. They've got everything they need. All we got to do is bring the um, excavator over. You know, we, sh we probably should have done this first. We're probably going to use up most of the fuel in all of those pumps and generators before we actually get this big beastie all the way back over there. Um, I am quite looking forward to using this one, though. It's been sat there now for a little while. I've been looking at it. And I edited the last video. I could see it sat there. It was looking really good. And what do we got here? Uh, looks much the same inside the cab, but we don't want to do inside the cab. We're going to go outside the cab like this. So let's start this bad boy up. And if I just press shift a minute, I can move these around. Yeah, it would help if I had the... Um, there. You move it. You, you generally drive it like that in that kind of position. Oop, handbrake. You generally drive it in that kind of position. And if you're turning sharp, you actually put the bucket on the ground and lift the front of the machine up in the air. And then when you've lifted the machine up in the air, you twist the turntable on the digger, on the excavator, at the same time as turning both of the... as, as like, turning on the tracks. And it twists it on the spot without actually scuffing up the ground very much. It does scuff it a bit. You can't avoid scuffing it a bit. But it doesn't scuff it a huge amount. And by doing it like that, it also helps to save the tracks. It stops the tracks from like uh, coming off or breaking. On this one, the tracks are going to break 
rather than um, flip off. It's very rare for metal tracks to just slip off. They normally um, will snap rather than slip off. At least that's what I... That's what I've been led to believe. I haven't driven one with metal tracks very much. Most of my stuff has been done with a rubber track machine. And that one, the tracks will come off for a pastime. If you try to spin that one on the spot or turn too sharp while you're driving, you will throw the track off. It's, it's, not, it's not a, well, I might. It's a definite. You will definitely throw the track off if you do that while you're driving a, a rubber tracked machine. Eventually. It might not happen the first time, but it will eventually throw the track off. And... It's a real pain. It's a genuine, genuine pain because then you've got to take the, um, the cover, all the casings off and try to um, put it all back together again. It's, it's not easy. It's, it's a bit of a nuisance. So you don't really want to do that too much if you can help it. Right, I reckon about there would be good. Um, so yeah, you don't, you don't want to do that too much if you can help it because you don't want to be uh, having to put tracks back on. It takes too long. It's just a time-consuming headache, generally. Right, I reckon if I go here, let's just see if we've got it in the right place. I'm probably a little bit too far away, actually. Uh, actually, I'm not. Actually, that's not too bad. That's that's reasonably close. Um, I do want to go forward a little bit more. Just take that handbrake off. Well, backwards a little bit more, actually. I should say there. I think would be about right. So, is this going to work? Are we going to be able to do? Two at the same time. I really have no idea. I'm going to try... I'm just trying to think where's the best place to do this. I reckon if we can do it like that, maybe. If we can have that as the camera angle. Let's see. And lower that down a bit. I don't know how this digger is going to respond. How the bucket and stuff responds. It's tipping it... In, I've, I've done it again i've tipped it all out on the ground but that's because of the physics of the game rather than the actual um digger itself it's just the way that the physics work with this bucket by the look of it or with with the diggers themselves um they're, they're very keen to like tip everything out of the machine i think i'm actually facing the wrong way for me to use this particularly well there if i go like that and I think I'm actually a little bit too far away still. But what did we get then? No, nope, one of them didn't get anything in it, and the other one got uh, everything in it. So let me just take the um, thingy off, and I'll move that way a bit more. Let's try it like that. Put the handbrake back on. I'm going to be very disappointed if this doesn't work at all. I think I'll have more luck if I try to do it from this angle. So let's go there. That's a bit better, I think. There. Right, now, if I can just pick that up and spin that round. Now, I'm trying to put this in the middle of the two, but it's whether it just drops from where you're working, and I, mi I missed them completely then, didn't I? Oh, no, they both got it. They both took it. I mean, I didn't... It wasn't particularly smooth, admittedly. There's definitely room for improvement there all the way round, but I did get it. It did go into both of them. I got them lined up reasonably straight. I do need to pull it out a bit further before I tip. That's better. It's still not perfect. It's because of the size of the machine. Maybe if I can try it from this angle, we'll see how that works. But it's difficult to do it from this way just because of how I'm used to driving machines in like f likes of Farming Simulator and that, it's actually this angle is more difficult for me to look at. Bring that back round. It's also quite difficult to judge it because I'm now straight on from the digger. Um, let's put that out. there. Yeah, let's try that. Tip between the two. One's full completely and the other one is on five percent i mean yeah they, they are both working they are both doing this so let's try and um get another scoop full in once i get once i get the hang of this i think it's going to be fairly quick it would help if i went the right way so as that one's there i'm going to put most of it over on this side this time yep excellent Okay, well, this is actually working really well. 
both of them together. It doesn't look like it's dropping anything down in between the, the two of them. It's getting almost all of it exactly where we want it to go. And bring that back round again. And this time... See, it, it, you do have to sort of allow for which side it's going to fall on. That's working. It's actually working. This is really, really cool. And we've got to see what sort of money we get from these now because um, the first time I did this, I got quite a bit. But now apparently you don't get so much from each bucket full. You, you do get less. Ooh. Okay, that's not good. Uh, okay, that's actually the first graphics bug that I have yet seen on this game. I have not seen one up until now. Um, and I mean, it's just the shadows flickering around. And there was nothing major. But I have seen pictures of people's issues with different graphics bugs that have been happening to them lately. So I'm glad that I have been able to experience it as well. I wouldn't like to think that I was being left out here for any reason. Bring that one back round and we'll give this another go. It might just be because of the amount of stuff that we're moving at the moment. It's just sort of the, the game trying to catch up with where the new shadows should be as it processes out of the different machines. I, I don't know. That, that's, that's kind of my guess to it. Ah, you go, We do have to be careful that we don't accidentally put too much into one wash plant because if you do, it doesn't actually get to process it and like it keeps flashing at us, it's um, wasting it. However, I would just like to point out that people have spent, already spent hundreds of hours playing this game and you know put, it, put in a hundred hours or more into the game, digging stuff up and haven't yet cleared out one claim. And there are four claims currently on the map. I know that you can get three. I don't know how you go about getting the last claim. I don't even know if it's opened yet. But, um, yeah, I don't think anybody's been able to clear all of the dirt on all of them. And I would guess that there is a way to um, open up more claims in the future. I believe... Well, they did say in the original development um, that they, there would be, like, DLCs that you could get later on to open up more stuff. So I can't see any reason why this would be it. You know, you, you if you want to do it all on one save game, I can see no reason why uh, you're going to be stuck with nothing else. And I just chucked a whole load of dirt into the air. You've seen the shadows going? Just launched itself up into the sky. But, I mean, we didn't actually lose very much. I, I'm, I'm sure it's come down somewhere else on the claim. It's just going to be raining dirt on someone. Maybe a... A random, um, a random passing moose or something is going to get a load of dirt raining down on top of it. Right, one of those buckets is at 97%. One of the buckets is going to be filled in just a moment. So actually, I'm going to jump out now while that's going. And we're going to take a look. There's the hole that we've dug already, which is pretty impressive, actually. And it won't have made any difference whatsoever to the game. We've got some bits of dirt here that are coming out the end of this one. And if we look round this side, uh, we've got a bit more coming out here. It looks like it's sort of piling up a little bit there now. But generally speaking, it doesn't seem to be piling up very much at all. So this bucket here is at 100%. So we can take that one and we can put it down. Get another one and replace it. And then leap back in and keep going. There we go. Right, I want to... Let's sort of try and do it like that. So I get a good view of everything. I get I get a view of the machine that I'm using. And I also get a view of the twin washers. Bring that up. Sometimes I spill a little bit as I bring the dirt up. Um, you know, if I was doing this in real life and I was spilling like that as I was um, bringing the dirt up, I would pretty quickly be removed off of the excavator and told to go and do something with a shovel so that I didn't hurt anyone and waste anybody's time. Because you need to do it efficient. When you, if you're using a big excavator, you do need to work efficiently. You've got to be able to do it. Um, you've got to be able to do it well, and you've got to be able to do it efficiently. And efficiency is kind of the big thing. It's the big key to driving a big excavator. You don't want unnecessary movements of the boom because they take time, and unnecessary movements translate to unnecessary money being spent. Um, being spent paying you your hourly wage, being spent, but more importantly, 
being more money being spent then on um let me just put that down there there we go uh maintenance of the machine because every movement wears the machine out a little bit and the bigger you get with these machines the the more it costs for every single movement of the machine in diesel in um spare parts and all those sorts of things i mean even right down to the to the buckets you've got to regularly replace the teeth now i normally drive quite a small excavator when i've um, been doing it like a little mini dig it's, it is a mini digger it's a one and a half 1.8 ton um hitachi i think it is yeah hitachi um it's a, it's a 1.8 ton machine so it's, it's only a little mini digger it's not a big excavator by any stretch and that one i've done a couple thousand hours i think on it now not not a very not very much at all really just um I, it may not even be a couple thousand it might just be like 1500 hours and we've had to replace the teeth on that one once just once i've replaced the teeth on one of the buckets not even on both of the buckets that have teeth i've got three buckets that i use with it uh, um, a small one a standard digger and a ditcher um, the ditcher doesn't have teeth and the other two they do have teeth but the trencher that one's not had um not had to replace the teeth on that one yet just the bigger one right we got it 94 percent on one of the buckets there now on the other bucket so i want to put most of this load into the other plant um just some of it into that one there we go put 75 percent fill this one up so that one's got only like a few percent it's at 97 98 there's literally hardly anything left so i'll do the same again now try and put most of this i haven't actually got very much in this bucket full i don't think should just be a, a tiny part bucket and i'm wanting to get all of these buckets to 100 percent i realize that that is actually going to be wasting some soil okay i didn't put any <laughs> i didn't put any in it that time so let's try that again and a few people did say they don't want to see too much um, work with the excavator. Unfortunately, we've now sort of reached that point in the game where a lot of what we do is going to be with the excavator. Ooh, 67%. That's too much. Right, i tell you what. Let's leap out. We'll get a bucket round there really quick. And we can change that bucket as soon as it reaches 100%. Let's take that one out and put that one in. There we go. Okay, we did it. We had so we did lose a little bit, but we haven't wasted nearly as much as we could have done. We could have lost a lot more than that. Let's jump back in, and I just need to zoom out a little bit, get it to there. Right, the other bucket's already at sixty-eight percent. So let's tip this out again. There we go. Yeah, we will have to be doing quite a bit of um, digger work. Um, for now, we're going. The excavator is going to be our main tool. But there is also uh, the wheel loader that we'll be using later on and the bulldozer as well. And I'm hoping that they do do a bit of work to the wheel loader. I'm wondering if we could get the wheel loader going with this setup. Could we, will the wheel loader reach high enough and does it have a long enough reach to tip into the top of these two? If it does, we could use that to do this job. And I think that would actually be really cool. I think it would be a lot of fun. We're getting the whole shadow glitch again so let me just jump out of the excavator ah uh, it's just because of where the excavator is and because it's making almost certainly it's because as you dig in it sort of creates new shadows and then the game has to sort of catch up with that so it's it's a minor glitch i imagine that they will be sorting that glitch at some point fairly soon um these guys do seem to be pretty switched on with getting their patches in um I did say before that I thought that they were the same people who did the... Oop, I'm pressing the wrong buttons, that's why. Um, it was the same people who did Car Mechanic Simulator. No, it's not. I got that wrong. It's not the same developers. It's the same publishing company, same publishing house, um, Playway, uh, but it's not the same actual devs. The devs are a different group of people, um, but it is by the same publishers. So there is a link between this and Car Mechanic Simulator, but it's not the actual devs. So I just wanted to clarify that. I 
I'm not sure. I, because I'm doing so many videos at the moment, I do sometimes uh, forget what I've said in a previous video and what I haven't said in a previous video. So um, I do apologize, apologize if I've been repeating myself. Um, it's not my intention to repeat myself too much. Oop, wrong way. I want to go there. Tip the rest into that one. Right, we're going to have another full bucket in a moment. So let me leap out and we can watch that one through. Get you... Put you down there, and when that one reaches 100%, we'll do the quick swap over again. And 100%, there we go. Put that one in there. And that makes three buckets so far. We've got one more spare bucket, and we've got the two in the machine. So we'll end up with six bucketfuls of stuff. Six bucketfuls that we're going to need to then put through the wave table and the magnetite separator to see what we can get. I'm confident that we could get a decent bit of cash out of this. I'm not really sure. Um, the first time using the wave table was before they did a minor patch that kind of increased the amount of stuff that we were getting. And then the second time I used the wave table, I don't think that the patch... Um, I don't think I was then um, getting that like extra. I think that was like what it's supposed to be. I know that one of them, I forgot to turn the wave table on and I still got the stuff. But I think that was also the one where if I had switched it on, I would have had um, way, way too much, way more than um, was intended. I did get quite a good yield out of it anyway. So um, at the moment, it looks like you get roughly an ounce per bucket, maybe a little bit more. I thought that we got a bit more than that, to be honest. I thought that we got a bit more than an ounce per bucket. And I'm not, I'm not sure. Maybe we didn't. Maybe we didn't get quite that much. We'll have to wait and see. But these two plants working together, it does seem to be quite successful. I'm very pleased with this. And I'm also quite pleased with this big digger. It's less savage on the arm than the small one. But you find that in real life as well. The bigger the excavator, the easier it is to operate. When you've got a little mini digger the controls are a lot more sensitive. You put through the same amount of um, movement on the joystick with a mini excavator as you do on a big one, and you end up... Um, it, it's a lot jerkier. You, it, it's actually harder work to keep the thing running smooth than it is with a big machine. Because the big machine, when you, you move it, there's a lot more oil to move around. Those uh, rams are a lot bigger, so it, it takes longer to sort of take effect on anything as as it moves around and so a bigger machine is easier to operate you get less um jerky movements than you do with any small machine and i'm really pleased that they've done that on here that is actually in here we can see it quite clearly i am finding this a lot easier than i was with the smaller one i mean it does help that i've now gotten used to how i've set up my keyboard so that i've got the keyboard controls on the joysticks the, key well, the keyboard controls are set for how the joysticks would be in real life. Um, some people have suggested getting an Xbox controller and plugging that into my computer and using the two joysticks on there. I've thought about it. I I'll probably try that at some point because my kids do have an Xbox, so I could probably steal one of their controllers. I've just got to find out how I'm supposed to plug it into my computer. I probably need a, a special lead or something for that. Um, oop. Um, but... Yeah, I, I'm not actually sure that that would be any easier for me. I mean, it, maybe it would, but because I'm used to the joystick sort of being down by my side, I don't think it's going... Having the two of them right there in front of me, I mean, I guess it might work, but I, 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 I genuinely am not certain at the moment. So it's something that I will try later on if I can get the Xbox controller to work, but um, I'm not certain that it's going to work very well. Oh, I see. It seems to be when you're like a little bit further away from yourself and then you you push in. You get this whole shadowy madness going on. And even climbing out, or not climbing, just ignoring it and carrying on, it doesn't seem to have caused any issues. It's just run its course and then figured out what it was doing. So we'll go in and we've got these two buckets here. We've got one more bucket on the ground. So I'm wondering if we can finish this before nightfall. Now, what's lights? It's one thing I don't remember. So let's just bring that one up. And uh, headlights is L. Oop. That's not the one that I want to press. Let's go there. Let's go L. There we go. Really? 
That's not, that's not very much in the way of lights. It really isn't. Okay, let's carry on. We got we, we got a little bit of light. Oh, and it's raining. I didn't even know that they had rain in this game. Is that going to make it more difficult for us? Is that going to, like, is there a side effect of having rain? That's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> We're digging in the rain. There was talk somewhere that they are thinking of adding in um, seasonal changes. So you, you actually have winter and you've got to deal with winter. Now, in real life, I have been told, I don't know myself, but I have been told in real life that in Alaska, winter is about 240 days. You spend, you know, summer is very, very short. And so you have like literally from like June until October or something. Um, it, it might even be less than that. And then the rest of it is winter. So you don't have a long digging season. So I don't know if we really want to simulate that in this game because otherwise we're going to have literally just sat there staring at our machines for um, days and days and days. And that's not going to be much fun, really, if you think about it. There's, there's definitely not going to be a huge amount of fun involved with doing something like that. Right, we got one at 94% and we got one at 93%. So what I'm thinking here is I will... Well, that one at 95%, that might actually fill completely by the time it's um, gotten all the way down. Yes, it will. 100%. Okay, everything is running. That one is down to 11% diesel, so that one's almost out anyway. The rain is coming down. Oh, that is fantastic! I'd re I don't know if you can see this very well on the video, because it's now getting quite dark, but the trees are really going nuts here. I got all of the the fuel is being used up fairly rapidly that one is full so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to just fill this bucket myself and then we'll spend the night and we can start moving this stuff back down um in the morning i want to do this now while it's still while i still got some light uh because uh, the, the fuel is running out and i don't really want to go through and have to switch everything off and then switch it all back on again because by the time i do that it's probably all going to be gone anyway so let me just tip that in there and yeah, I'll see you when I filled up both of these buckets completely and um, it stopped hoofing it down with rain. Oh, well, that's it. We've run out of diesel and it's still absolutely lashing it down with rain. Very, very dark. Can't see anything. You know, it would probably help if I turn this machine off. So I'm going to go and it would probably help if I turn the, the lights off as well or they'll go flat by the morning. Right. That's better. Can't see anything now. Yeah, it, the um, we've got one at 23% and I've got one over here that is full. So I will deal with this and I'll see you in the morning. Right, what we need to do is we need to go into town and we need to get a few extra things. And having thought about this, I think what we really want to get, let me just climb out a minute, it's still raining by the way, still absolutely lashing it down with rain. What we could really do with is another generator because then we can leave this generator up here and I can get a second generator down there for those tables and some hose, two extra hose pipes to run from that generator there down to those tables and then we can just sort of unplug the, um, the long red hose through there and just use that to power those two down there just for a little while and then we can reattach hoses and we've got everything set up up here still so i've got at the moment i got five buckets full and i got one bucket at like 20 odd percent and we have run out of diesel these two diesel cans have got nothing in them the um the generator is empty this pump is almost empty as well so i'm going to take these now we will want the magnetite trailer but we're not going to be ready for that one yet we don't have i don't think we're going to have enough magnetite I'll also get a couple more buckets. I don't think that we're going to ever run... We're never going to be able to have enough buckets, I don't think. That's going to be one thing with the game, is we are going to want more and more and more buckets. So as it's lashing it down with rain, I'm going to do it this way this time. Um, handbrake off. Just back around a little bit. I don't know what my driving is going to be like from inside the cab, because I feel like I'm too low down for this to be working properly. You've also, you do have to be careful. I don't know if the rain does actually affect the handling of the vehicles on the road. You st you do, ooh. One thing i got to be wary of, though, is 
the diesel cans bouncing out of the back. So maybe we should do it like this. Just come up through here. It doesn't look like the rain at the moment affects traction or anything like that. It's still much the same as it was when it was bone dry. So I'm hoping that that is something that's added in later on. It's an extra layer of physics that they probably have to do or something. Um, but driving around on the dirt, I think, would be absolutely incredible if you had that. Um, you know, if, if, the, if the rain actually affected it, if you could actually, it was a lot more difficult to move anywhere on dirt with the rain falling and so it's all soaking wet and you're slipping, you're sliding all over the place. You've got to use your diff lock a lot more then and things like that. Just little details like that, I think, could be very, very cool. And I suspect that Gold Rush the Game, Gold Rush 2, or Gold Rush the Game 2, um, will have a lot more of these things that uh, different people have been talking about. Right, I'm going to get to the shop and get a few things, and then we can go from there. Well, that's one thing that's not quite so good. We do get the same thing in Farming Simulator. The rain is falling inside the shop. It's a little bit disappointing, I've got to be honest. Uh, but generally speaking, it's not, it's not coming down as heavily as it is outside, I don't think. But it's still falling inside the shop, which is a little bit... Dis oh, maybe it is falling as heavily. It's a little bit disappointing, but I mean... It's, it's the sort of thing that you can live with, but it would be nice if there was a fix for it. And now we have the joy of trying to hitch this thing up. Because if you come back just even a little bit, it um, it tends to try to go too fast, which makes it difficult. I know that I can do it while it's actually lit up. And I'm trying to get that right. There we go. And stop, 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 stop. There we go. Now that's fairly well lined up. I think that we can go with that. I don't like it too far away. Uh, because, yeah, I don't like it to sort of jump around too much. As, but that's just personal preference rather than anything else. Okay. Now we can go and fill this one up and see how much it's going to cost to fill the mobile fuel tank. Uh, the fuel trailer. How much it's going to cost to actually fill it right up. That's, uh, I don't know how many gallons it takes, actually. Because the, the jerry cans take 20 gallons. So we'll see how much this one takes. Let's just nip over to here. It doesn't look like we're going to be able to get back to the claim and do anything else today. And I, mean, I really would like for the rain to stop as well. I don't want to be doing this the whole time while it's lashing it down with rain. Let's go forward a little bit more. I think we go about there. Let's stop you. And I'm going to turn the lights off as well. Right. Let's leap out. And I'm going to take that one down. I'm going to try to get these two jerry cans. I'm going to put... Okay, I'm just going to chuck them all over the floor, apparently. I'm going to put them down there on the floor. It's the best place to put them. And that one as well. So then I can take this and I can fill you up. Nope. There is a way to do this. Right, there we go. And, right, use. So then fill that one all the way up for 20 gallons. Refuel. And then that one there. Fill that one up, 20 gallons. 199 a gallon. That's a lot cheaper than it is here in the UK, I'll tell you that much. Although this is... Are we using red diesel? We call red, we call white diesel just white diesel, and then red diesel is called Dove, and that has... Um, the only difference is it's got red dye added to it. Um, there's no other difference between red diesel, which is farm diesel and construction diesel, than white diesel, which is the road, uh, except that you pay a lot more tax for the white diesel, so it's a lot more expensive. They make it cheaper for red diesel so that um, it's, it's just cheaper for the farmers. It stopped raining at last. Right, we can lift the top off there. And then we can get our fuel tank, um, fuel hose, and... Okay, how do we do this? I thought you just put the hose... Oh, yeah, it, it does work. Put that one on there. Right, and how much are we going to get in this one? A thousand gallons. Right, well, we used two containers at 20 gallons a piece. So we've used 40 gallons so far. And, you know, it lasts us a reasonable amount of time. I think that 1,000 gallons at just under $2,000 is going to last us a fairly reasonable amount of time. I, I can't see it being much of an issue. Now, I can't just walk away from the pump and leave it like that. We do need to hang it up back up properly. And we put the lid on there. Right, those two are both in there along with the buckets. So I am now going to head back to the claim, um, but that is all that we've got time for today. So tomorrow we will, we may just do a little bit more with our, um, I'm not going anywhere. Ah, I don't know why I wasn't going anywhere. 
yeah, we may do a little bit more with our excavator first and fill up a couple more buckets. So, because we got these extra four buckets, I'm tempted to fill the four buckets first um, at the beginning. And then we'll go through with the excavator. Uh, not the excavator. We'll then move them all down to the wave table and we'll get started on using the wave table and the um, magnetite separator and getting all of that. I would also like to come back and get a magnetite trailer because I reckon by that time we're going to have at least one bucket of magnetite to be able to put into the magnetite trailer, uh, maybe a little bit more. I have been told that when the magnetite trailer is completely full and you take it to the magnetite factory there and you empty it out over that grill, uh, you actually end up getting about $10,000 for the magnetite, which is really, it, it's definitely worth the time and effort to extract the magnetite from the gold ore because if you don't you can just tip it straight into the wave table rather than putting it through the separator first and um, you get the same amount of gold out of it it's just you lose that magnetite which is like an extra product that you can get from it but that really is all i got time for so if you enjoyed the episode then please head down below and give me a like and if you really enjoyed it then please tell your friends all about me get them to come and watch as well that would be awesome but until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.